In the studio this evening, we have the original rock and roller, the founder of glam rock, Mark Bolan and his lovely wife, Gloria. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello. It's great of you to come down. Yes. Now, Mark, you've just uh, completed uh, a tour, which uh, is your first tour for two years. Yep. Uh, I've been away for, I think, so, nearly two and a half years. I've been back on and off, but we'll talk about that later. But, mm. uh, yeah, we just finished it, and it was really a guess. We did four weeks on the road, mm. and... Uh, what sort of venues did you take in? Uh, we did in London. We did the Lyceum. What I wanted to do, I kept most of them pretty small, about three thousand seaters, you know, um, because I, I'm trying to get away from. Uh, we did Wembley and all those places before, and that big hollow sound. I tried to get nearer to the kids this time, mm. and uh, I did an acoustic set, which is nice. I did Deborah and all the old numbers, you know. Yeah. Um, and I really just wanted to get back to what music is about for me and, and play for the fans, to be quite honest. Because you haven't played in England for... Well, for two years. For really. two years. You've yeah. been away in America. Yeah, well, basically, I'll tell you what, what it was about. Was um, I felt at the end of 1974 that we'd had about 14 hits then, you know. And I felt I was kind of becoming a hit machine. Mm. Every three months I was putting a single out and it was expected of me. Um, so you consciously, deliberately... Yeah, I, yeah, I wanted to get out of it because I was being stuck alongside David Cassidy and Donny Osmond and that. And there's nothing wrong with that, believe me. They're all nice people. But you had Cassidy on the other week, David. Mm, yeah, he's, exactly. a nice, he's a nice man, right? But, uh, I mean, Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is the original T-Rex name, started in 67. And I initially was an underground act or an album act, you know? And I kind of felt that, I mean, uh, my songs uh, in particular weren't anything like puppy love. You know, I mean, so I thought I, I was getting, I thought I was getting lumbered w with being. I, I mean, I enjoy being a teenage idol. Don't get me wrong, I adore it, and I love it when the kids, you know, uh, show their appreciation. But I did feel that um, I was uh, wrongly being segregated into um, being, uh, as you say, the innovator of glam yeah. rock, which is which is cool. I know what you yeah. mean. You, you were looking for a respect as a musician, really. Well, well I started out having respect mm, as a musician, yeah. and I could see m myself losing yeah. uh, the respect. See, the most important thing about me is I, I don't care about critics, you know. Um, but fortunately for me, people like Lennon, Bob Dylan, and various other people like my music, and mm. they respect my words, you know. And um, it's, it's kind of like I, I felt that if I continued doing that, and the, all the records, that, believe me, all the singles I've made I enjoyed, but I was getting to the point, I think it was about Truck on Tight, one of those records, when I was beginning to realise that I was really into a formula. Hmm. And I had to stop that. So I took a year off. I went to America. I lived in Monte Carlo for a while. And you didn't work at all then? No, I did no nothing but just sit back, watch videos, just really be a punk, you know. Yeah. I'd just be lazy. A street you know. punk. Right, a street punk. I mean, I just laid back and enjoyed um, what, what was left of my wealth. I mean, I'm well skint now, I tell you. Oh, uh, I don't believe it. It's true, no, because what happens, I, le I left England on, 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 on to get away from the tax thing, as we were talking mm. about. I mean, because most, uh, I mean, it's hard for the kid in the street to understand, but a uh, pop star gets taxed about 95%. Mm. Um, so consequently, though, I, mean, I, I left and went all around the world trying to avoid paying tax and found out I'd spent all the money I had anyway. Mm. So I needn't have bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but if you come back, it, you, you presumably have to pay the back tax anyway. I'm sure I do. I mean, I can't worry about that anymore. I mean, I'm just... Uh, the reason we did this tour was I decided that, I mean, uh, fortunately, you know, um, the first record I put out after all that time was New York City, mm. which would be nice to hear if we can play a bit later. And that was uh, my... Uh, that was a big hit. My comeback record, yeah, and mm. it, was, it was a huge record, right. Mm. So it proved that the fans didn't forget me. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, they seem to have forgotten um, Donnie and David, which is, you know... Yeah. Uh, but I could see that happening to me, so, I mean, I just... God bless them, man. I'm still here. <laughs> Musically, we have improved incredibly, you see. I think you have to, because mm. music has gone on, what? So you weren't happy with the, you know, with the former N band? Not at the end, no, not at the end. I mean, um, Mickey Finn left because he wanted to... Bill and Legend. I changed... But Bill left because, um, sadly, he was going deaf, which is very bad for a drama. Really? Uh, but uh, but it was getting stale, you know. So I, you know, I kind of stopped and had to reorganise myself. Mm. So what's the current lineup of the band now? Uh, at the moment, we've got Steve Curry, who's my original bass player. He's still with me because mm. I mean, he kind of grew with me. I've got uh, Dino Dines, who's English. Yeah, he's on plays synthesizers and organ and stuff. Davy Lutton, who's Irish. He used to be with Air Apparent. Mm. In fact, J Jimi Hendrix produced. With they used to be on the track label years ago. Uh, yeah. But they were a good band. And I've got Gloria Jones on keyboards and bits and pieces and making babies <laughs> and uh, I use a guy called Tyrone Scott who's uh, also a black guy from LA mm. he's in a group called the Majestics or was and uh, he sings and, and plays with uh, 
Yeah. And that's about it. I mean, we're about six people now. So you're a family man now? Well, I've got a kid. I haven't changed. I'm more loony now than I was before. But um, <laughs> Roland Bolan is my baby, right? He's, I delivered him myself, you know, personally. Did you really? Oh, yeah. That must him. have been something else. I pulled him out, didn't I? Pulled him out of the hat. Oh. And that was great. But, I mean, he's, uh, he's really, uh, you know, I mean, he's really a rock and roll baby. You should have brought him along. I would have done, but he's only five months. Uh, I mean, listen. He's, so he's listening, actually. Is he really? Oh, yeah. Hello, Roland. Hi. How do you fit the, uh, the family life in with the gigging and everything? Well, when you say family life, I mean, I've only got one life, which is rock and roll and uh, extending my brain around my body, which is what, you know, I mean, uh, the, the baby comes with me wherever we go and all. He's been, I mean, he's been around the world twice. Mm. I mean, he's got a couple of godfathers, you know. David Bowie is one of his godfathers. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Dave, see, Dave, that's why I call him Roland Boland, because David's got a kid called Zowie Bowie, you see. Oh, uh, it's a great name, so, so Roland Boland. Right, we've got to stick them both together, you see. So, um, I mean, he's been around. I mean, he's, he's been all around. Like, he's, he's a guy. Yeah. He, he loves rock and roll. One day I feel so happy, next day I feel so sad. I guess I love to take the good with the bad. It's not I ask the stars up above. Why must I be a teenager? I walk along the streets. Nobody calls my name. I wonder who's about to bore all drills in my brain. It's not I ask the stars up above. Why must I be a teenager? In love? I cried a tear, she up, she up, for nobody but you. She up, she up. I'll be the only one if you should say with you. Here, 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 you want to make me cry. That won't be so hard to do. If you should say goodbye, I see like I want to love you. It's not a the stars up, 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 Why must I be a teenager? Why must I be a teenager in love? love? Why must I be a teenager? Love, love. I don't want to be all alone on the sidewalk. Love, love. Why must I be a teenager in love? You still writing rock and roll? Oh, of course. Come yeah, on, of course. all the time. When do you find time to write? I mean, between uh, the records and the television and all the rest of it. I write best under pressure, which is like that. I mean, I sit down. I mean, I watch TV at home. It's actually old movies and stuff. I get stimulated by records. I love the top 50. I always listen to pop records. Hmm. But I listen to classical music, too. And I listen to whatever's around. And in between all that, I, you know, the moments I, in fact, write songs, I think, are when there's, I've got nothing to listen to. Hmm. And I write what I want to hear. Mm. You know, when you think about it, I mean, I write what, like, if I, I write what I think should be number one on the charts, and I'll write the song. Yeah. I'll listen to everything that's on the charts, and I'll write it. And I'll write what I think m my fans want to listen to, you know. You don't go out and write for a commercial market? No, you? I've never done that. I don't believe in that. I mean, Ride a White Swan, which was my first record, mm. uh, well, first big hit, anyway, um, was written, in fact, I mean, lyrically, it's totally uncommercial. I can't, I, it hasn't even got drums on it. Or mm. I don't know even why it was a hit. It's interesting you're talking about lyrics there because you've got a fascination for lyrics and you've had I, a... I am England's best-selling poet. You, you <laughs> are, I know. The, the book was called... Warlock of Love. And that sold, uh, I'm told, five, 500,000 copies? More. Something like that. Yeah, yeah which is tremendous. I mean, that, that, that puts you up with the, the biggest poets. Right. Uh, Funny, isn't it, really? I mean... Co yeah. Cockney boy, a London boy from Hackney, you see. <laughs> London boy makes London, good. yes. London boy makes good. Shock Which horror. is also the title of my new single. The London <laughs> Boys. Yes, we're going to take a listen to that later. Yeah. Um, Mark, you're going to play... Um, I'm going to do Dreamy Lady, which you like. I'll mm, do that. Oh, I love it. it. Me and Gloria do that. And we'll explain to the, to the kids that, in fact, what we're doing is... Um, I just put my acoustic guitar along, so it's... It, this is uh, Bolan in the Raw. This is Mark Bolan. 210 Thames Valley. 
sing to every young woman who wants to be my dreamy lady. Radio 210, Thames Valley. It's easy listening. Are the band very tight? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't mean are they mean. No, no. <laughs> exactly. On this tour, we rehearsed in fact for four months which is why we're going to tour again in May. Mm. We're going to do a lot of, um, in fact, we'll, we'll probably do Reading. Yeah. We're going to do places like Lewisham. We're, I want to do something at the Roundhouse, because I don't want to play these big places again, but I want to do something like like, like the, the, the early Tyrannosaurus Rex mm. days. I want to do like a three-day Mark Boland festival thing. Mm. We show Born to Boogie, which is that film I made with Ringo Starr and Elton, you know? And um, I want to keep it real cheap, about 75p. Yeah. I don't want it's, I think it's too expensive now. Uh, what, what I'm getting at is that um, what you you're playing at? all the old hits, right, on stage. Uh, on the, this first tour, uh, I With a new that. band, essentially. Yeah, uh, yeah. And when you made the old hits, you were playing them live with, with the old band, with Bill yeah. Legend and with, with all the Yeah, numbers. we had to re-rehearse and, and, and think about it. Because I'm saying, Gloria plays keyboards, uh, Tyrone plays keyboards. So I had, in fact, we had three synthesizers on stage. So it's a huge sound. You mm. know, it's a very different sound. Now, Gloria is very soul oriented yeah? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Gloria has actually written, she wrote My Mistake for Diana Ross, she wrote If I Were Your Woman for Gladys Knight in the Pits, which was a goldie. She wrote Seven Numbers for The Four Tops. Mm. She's written, you know, many, many hits for the Motown label. And Gloria sings. Uh, oh, sings, yeah. Well, sings we've got, we've got a record, which we're going to play now. We've got a record by Gloria, which is a version of Get It On, which is yeah. one of my oldies, oldies but goldies. And uh, we, in fact, did that in L.A. Well, Mark, you've recently been delving into the realms of television on uh, Thames Television's Today programme, Chat Show. Yeah, what, what happened, I tell you, was I did um, a show, in fact, for, for Eamon, the Eamon Andrews show. A Eamon's show, if you want, the Today Show, right? Um, uh, and they got me on with Telly Savalis, right? Mm. And Telly is an angel. Yeah. No, he's a baby. I who love it, you. Yeah, I love it, baby. I mean, he's great. Now, what happened? We got in there, and we are talking about, like, divorces and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and... Um, just uh, what actually happens in, in a private life and keeping your life private. And uh, we were on there, I think Alan Hargreaves, who's very sweet, um, was doing the talking. Mm -hmm. But um, we were only allotted five minutes, and we, we in fact were on the air for 25, with Telly and I just talking to each other. Really? Right, and they got about 25,000 letters in. And in uh, fact, and it's a great show. I mean, but it was I was interviewing him, and he was interviewing me. It was just like you were, you know, carrying on a normal conversation. Exactly. In a room. Yeah, because he's a gas. He yeah. really is very nice, man. You know, and after that, they asked me to, if I'd like to do some talking things. And um, and you did about six or seven. Uh, we did eight actually. Yeah. Um, they've used seven of them. Mm. Um, one I did uh, with Keith Moon, bless him, which was totally unusable. <laughs> did, did he pull the studio apart? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what happened is, is uh, it started out all right, and. Um, we just got slightly drunk, uh -huh. to be quite honest, uh, and it just it, it ended up just a mess. I mean, but um, I did uh, Roy Wood, of Wizard, I did Angie Bowie, I did uh, Stan Lee of Marvel Comics. Oh yeah, which was great to do. Uh, which in fact I'm I'm going to do something for them. They want me to be a superhero for them. Real with Superman type thing. Well, well, no, see, the Electric Warrior, which was my first album, mm -hmm. was written as a superhero. Mm. He was meant to be um, a sort of uh, a godlike. Per, uh, persona who has um, something stuck in his belly button, which in fact was a guitar, and he made a sound like a supersonic sound or a subsonic sound, which wiped and wiped out and totally destroyed the enemy. You know, yeah. but uh, and the, and what the sound that came out was Jimi Hendrix, in fact. <laughs> you know, yeah. one of those sounds. Uh, but anyway, and I did, <laughs> I did John Mayall, I did some other people, and it was really good. And it went down very well. Did they give you the freedom to talk to the people that you really wanted to talk to, or did they say, "Look, here's John Mayall"? Uh, well, no, we, we because it was done very quickly, and the Today Show, in fact, is is a topical talk mm. show, um, but it's not um, a star show. Um, I was uh, slightly restricted because if, if someone got killed or the president resigned, I'd get cut off the show, or no, not only me, everyone else. Obviously, cause it's a news show, right? Um, so what we're working on now is um, me doing a series of talk shows. Um, talking to um, poets, actors, uh, directors, rock stars. 
Is that something you really would like to do? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I think um, it looks like the public would like to see me do it. Because I think I'm, so, I, yeah. I believe they think I'm real, I hopefully. I mean, because Mark Bowen, believe me, is not... Uh, I don't have any management behind me. I'm, I'm not anyone's figment of an imagination. I'm real. What I am, I am. You know, if you like me or not, I mean, you know. Mm. You know, I mean, um, I'm a bit arrogant sometimes. I'm a bit silly. But uh, basically, you know, I'm, a, I'm straight. I mean, I don't lie. Mm. And I think that comes over on TV. I hope so, anyway. So the thing what I'm trying to do is get to talk to people like Orson Welles and um, Ken Russell I'd like to talk to, Oliver Reed I'd like to talk to, I'd like to talk to Jean Moreau. I mean, uh, uh, in the rock world, I, I can get Jagger on there. I'd like to get Jagger, uh, Dave Bowie, and uh, maybe Elton all together on one show, have them talk for about 45 minutes, and then mm. we'll all have a jam at the end. That oh, would be great. It would be magnificent. Yeah, and it can be done. Yeah. And that, that's a th what I think we'll get together. That's what we'll do. 210 Thames Valley. Mark Bowman. This thing, one of my many hits. Ha! How good New York City. Did you ever see a woman coming out of New York City with a frog in her hand? Did you ever see a woman coming out of New York City with a frog in her hand? Yeah. I did doubt you now, wow. I did doubt well, touring is something that you'll be doing uh, very soon. Um, you're touring in May? Yeah. yeah, well, it's kind of like we did uh, four weeks, right, mm. from the first time back. And we had some problems. I had my nose broken in Manchester and a rib cracked. And I looked really kind of rotten. You look and, okay uh, now. Well, yes. yes. <laughs> I, I look my normal, beautiful self. Been patched but, up by uh, yeah. our makeup department. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, <laughs> but I did get knocked about a bit, which is... Um, I, I God bless the fans for like doing that, and uh, but, but, I mean it was like pretty hairy, mm. and I was surprised after two years. It's kind of interesting to get that kind of reaction, but we do. We're going to tour again in May, because um, I said Gloria's got her record out then, and um, I, I want to do a whole new act. I want to do about eight new songs and probably span about two and a half hours, mm. um, and not do the hits. This tour was done basically on hits. I want to play a lot of new songs and open a whole new dimension for me. I want to kind of revert back to Mark Bolan, 1969, which is Tyrannosaurus Rex, mm. and just move into where my head's at really now. And I'll just use a lot of other people apart from the group. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel when you're back... I feel, I feel. You feel, <laughs> you feel. When, when you're backstage and uh, there's, you know, thousands of girls out there and you're just about to go on with the band, uh, do you feel nervous or excited or no, I, elated I, or what? I normally feel very sexual. Sexual? Yes, to be quite honest. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no, knowing that there's that many pretty ladies out there always makes me very, you know, yeah. uh, romantic. You get off on that. Romantic. Makes me feel very romantic, yeah. And I get out there and we deliver the song. Mm. And uh, we cream the seats. And so, it, it I mean, even good. even after what, how many years you've been in the business, you still Ten get... Ten years now. Ten years. Th this year. You still get the nerves. Uh, yeah, I think I still get kind of scared. Mm. I'm scared, I mean, uh, I'm kind of scared that the people might think I'm not what, what I am mm. and I believe in being truth you know I believe in truth but um, well as you know today with the song you know I mean I, I've never actually sat down and sung an acoustic songs well we've had a you. terrific session here it was terrific amazing I mean Marty Wilde would flip